Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I cover the 1798 Rebellion in Ireland. Since the end of the Williamite Wars in Ireland, which I've also made a video on, and you can check out if you want before this, the government was dominated by the Anglican minority. The support the Catholic population had given to King James during the war led to Parliament passing a series of penal laws restricting Catholics' ability to purchase or inherit land. These laws also discriminated against Presbyterians. This discrimination and other factors contributed to the foundation of the Society of the United Irishmen. The founders of the Society were a mix of well-off Presbyterians, Anglicans and Catholics, and included people such as William Drennan, Samuel Nielsen and Theobald Wolfe Tone. Although they took a constitutional approach originally, they were forced underground when Prime Minister William Pitt's government attempted to suppress political groups in 1793. In reaction to this, Nielsen and the Belfast branch of the United Irishmen began planning to change the organisation to a revolutionary focus. Membership grew rapidly. Presbyterians joined mainly in the north, while Catholics joined from all over the country. While this was happening, a new group of leaders were elected for the United Irishmen, including most notably Lord Edward Fitzgerald, a veteran of the American War of Independence and also a Member of Parliament. This new leadership decided to send Wolfe Tone to France to request some form of help in the upcoming struggle. A force of 15,000 veteran troops and weapons to arm 20,000 more set sail from France on the 16th of December 1796. However, relentless storms prevented the fleet from landing in Ireland and they were forced to return to France. By 1797, the British government became aware that a revolutionary army was being prepared in Ireland by Wolfe Tone and his associates. In early 1798, there was a split in the United Irishmen, with one group believing they were well enough prepared to rebel without French aid, and the other believing that any military action should come following a French landing in Ireland. On the 10th of March, the United Irishmen were due to meet to vote on whether to go ahead with the rebellion. However, due to an informant, most who attended the meeting were arrested. Edward Fitzgerald and some others who arrived late managed to escape. This only served to strengthen the faction that were pushing for immediate rebellion. The government imposed martial law and began a strict crackdown on suspected rebels. A small rising in Cahar County Tipperary broke out in response, but was quickly crushed. The remaining leadership of the United Irishmen decided that the 23rd of May would be the date of a nationwide uprising. The initial plan was to take Dublin, with the counties bordering Dublin, to rise up in support and prevent the arrival of reinforcements, followed by the rest of the country who were to tie down other garrisons. The signal to rise was to be spread by the interception of mail coaches from Dublin. However, last-minute intelligence from informants provided the government with details of rebel assembly points in Dublin, and a huge force of military occupied them barely one hour before the rebels were to assemble. The army then arrested most of the rebel leaders in the city. Although the planned focus of the rebellion had imploded, the surrounding districts of Dublin rose up as planned, and were swiftly followed by most of the counties surrounding Dublin. The first clashes of the rebellion took place just after dawn on the 24th of May. The rebels quickly gained control of most of Kildare, even though the British forces won the majority of the battles in the county. They were ordered to retreat over fear of becoming isolated. Rebel defeats at Carlow and the Hill of Tara in County Meath effectively ended the rebellions in those counties. In County Wicklow, General Joseph Holt led his men on a guerrilla campaign against the British where they were quite successful, and forced the British to station a large force in the area. The rebels had the most success in Wexford, where they gained control of the county, but a series of bloody defeats at the battles of New Ross, Arklow and Bunclody prevented the effective spread of the rebellion beyond the county's borders. In the northeast, rebels led by Henry Joy McCracken rose up in County Antrim on the 6th of June. They briefly held most of the county, but the rising there collapsed following defeat at Antrim Town. In County Down, after initial success at Saintfield, rebels led by Henry Munro were defeated at Ballinahedge. 
20,000 troops eventually poured into Wexford and defeated the rebels at the Battle of Vinegar Hill on the 21st of June. The dispersed rebels spread across the country and the final remnants of these forces fought on until their defeat on the 14th of July at the battles of Knightstown Bog, County Meath and Ballybowl, County Dublin. On the 22nd of August, over a month after the main uprisings had been defeated, about 1,000 French soldiers under General Humbert landed at Kalala Bay, County Mayo, where they were joined by 5,000 locals. They had initial success against the British at Castle Bar, which became known as the Races of Castle Bar for the speed at which the Crown's forces ran from the rebels. An Irish Republic was declared with John Moore as President of Connacht. This led to some small-scale uprisings in support in Westmeath and Longford, which were easily defeated by the British. The combined force of French and Irish troops inflicted another defeat on the British at the Battle of Colooney, County Sligo, before being defeated at Ballinamuck, County Longford on September 8th. This ended the Irish Republic of the time, which had lasted only 12 days. The following month, Wolfe Tone and 3,000 French troops attempted to land in County Donegal. However, following a naval battle, they surrendered. Wolfe Tone was sentenced to death by hanging, however he committed suicide when his request to be shot by firing squad was denied. Although small groups of United Irishmen continued to hold out, chances of success were now gone, and in 1803 the final group under James Corcoran in Wexford were defeated. Although militarily a defeat, religious but not economic discrimination against the Catholic majority was gradually abolished after the Act of Union in 1800. Presbyterian radicalism was effectively tamed or reconciled to the British rule by inclusion in a new Protestant ascendancy, as opposed to a merely Anglican one. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed or found it interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel for more similar content in the future.